Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Aviation 5 here with another video. And we are finally back uh, with what is going to be quite the special model review. This is my first model review in at least a month, maybe even two months. Um, and yeah, it's been a couple reasons for that. I haven't uh, been doing a lot of... Uh, like model stuff recently have been keeping up on the airport updates, but I've been sort of away from it for a little while. Um, but anyways, we're back. And so, yeah, I've been, I've got a couple new models on the way, which I'll be doing reviews of soon. But anyways, uh, more information on the video that we're doing now. Uh, these are the Gemini Jets United her out here, 757-200s, both in the California and the New York liveries. Now, uh, a bit of a background, some background information on these. Some of you may be thinking uh, that you never heard of or saw these uh, Gemini models being released. Uh, NG did release them back in around April, I want to say. And um, those are the more common known uh, models. However, around the same time, Gemini also created the Her Art Here models as well, but I don't exactly know why. I think there were some copyright issues and they had to stop producing them. So because of that, these are the, these are almost the two mystery Gemini Jets models that were semi-released, only um, about half the stock of releases that they create were made. Typically, they make a certain amount of planes, and I think this was a fraction of that. So I, um, they were only available in person at one of the three airplane shop stores around the U.S., which is the one in Las Vegas, uh, New Jersey, Fairfield, New Jersey, and Miami, Florida. Now, uh, a couple months ago, I did go over to the New Jersey store, and these were there. Uh, so I initially wanted to get the NG ones, but they sold out instantly, so I was uh, going to wait to get them later on. But then I found these, and so I got these two. And these are quite possibly my favorite Gemini models um, I've ever unboxed, uh, and they are on par with the Iceland Air 757-200 in the Hecla Aurora livery. So, um, yeah, these two models are quite special, insanely rare. If you manage to find uh, one of these planes, if and uh, you are debating on getting it, I would definitely pick them up because uh, not only are they just beautiful looking models, but they are also, these could be the most uh, rare Gemini models uh, in history. I don't really know if that's true, but because these weren't ever an official release um, and only I think like a quarter of the stock were created, they are in very limited supply. So uh, yeah, that was quite the long intro for the video. However, I will now show you guys the special boxes that came with them. So we'll start with the New York box and then we'll move on to the California box. So off the bat, you'll notice that there is something different about these boxes. Um, and what it is, is obviously they are in uh, white color instead of the dark blue. And now even this style is different because Gemini uh, and their FedEx series and the Southwest series have white boxes. However, um, they aren't even quite like this one. So this is the pre-release box. This is an unofficial Gemini Jets box. You'll notice because there's no Gemini Jets logo um, on the box and there's like no uh, company information at all. It's just the computer-generated image there in the middle, and then what the aircraft is uh, down at the bottom, which is 1-400 scale. 
United 757-200, and then the registration. So you'll notice that that is the only thing that is on the box. And that's because these, uh, the copyright uh, issue came up before they were released and they never were able to print their regular box for these. So uh, this is like a unfinished box for the model. You'll see on the bottom uh, that same information there as well as this side. Uh, same thing on top, just a plain thing. All it gives you is the uh, small parts warning. And then there's a sticker there just to designate uh, so you were able to buy it. Again, this side, same as all the other sides. And then on the back, all you see is the computer generated image again. So that's the uh, New York box and the California uh, box is exactly the same. However, the registration for the models are different, and obviously the computer-generated image on the plane is different. So those are the two boxes, uh, definitely very different from what we're used to with Gemini. Um, and uh, yeah, so quite an interesting phenomenon with the boxes. And now I'll start by reviewing the United 757-200, her art here uh, plane. So, uh, tons and tons of detail on the models, both of them. So we'll start off in the nose as usual. We've got the, uh, nose cone, uh, cockpit windows. You'll notice that the, uh, front is painted white, whereas the rest of the fuselage is painted in a sort of tan slash gray color. I'm not entirely sure why, uh, but I guess it's accurate to the real plane. Uh, moving back, we have the L1 boarding door, which is covered by that sort of uh, barn generator uh, with the um, water-powered wheel for, like, upstate New York, I believe. Moving back, we've got the uh, nose gear there, the United logo, which looks really cool in a very sort of, uh, dark blue color. At the L2 door um, right here, we've got an antenna. Uh, and then there's like a lake below that United logo. We have the engines with uh, a good amount of detail. We'll get to that later on in the video. Over the wings there, um, there is the emergency exit doors and the pathway markings there over the wing. Got the winglets and the um, uh, port navigation light. Over the uh, sort of in the wing box area, you can see there's a big globe and then finally, uh, moving to the back of the aircraft, we've got the uh, Wi-Fi dish, the registration, which is November uh, 14102, and then the American flag. And in the back, we have the New York City detailing. So you've got the Brooklyn Bridge and then some skyscrapers, uh, just some basic skyscrapers there. Then uh, for more recognizable ones, there's the Empire State Building. And again, it continues un under the horizontal stabilizers. So that's, uh, oh, so the uh, Statue of Liberty and then the uh, rear emergency exit door. Uh, we've got the tail here looking nice in the shaded uh, from dark blue to light blue. Got the horizontal stabilizers and then the APU there. So uh, here's a look at the plane from the back. Again, everything's looking pretty nice. Uh, from this side now, um, the printing as far as the livery is all the same. It's just, it's symmetrical on both sides. However, you have the starboard navigation light there. And it is quite hard to see because of how much detail there is. But we do have one cargo door there and another cargo door just below the T uh, over there. So that is this side of the aircraft. Now, uh, taking a look at the front, you'll notice uh, that same sort of white patch, which kind of stands out, uh, which is a little bit funny. I don't know why it's, they would make the rest uh, but a tan color and then the nose just white. Anyways, looking into the engines, uh, these are some really nice 757 engines. Uh, they're sort of keeping that same 
style they've had with older releases in terms of fan blades and shape, and yeah, they look pretty good. So now uh, taking a look at the underside of the aircraft again, uh, for those of you who are regular uh, fans of Gemini and know their models, you'll notice something different, which I'll get to in a second. So up in the nose, we've got 757-200 there. Got the nose gear and the nose gear hold doors. Moving on back, uh, pretty much a plain belly uh, of the plane. Uh, there's that engine detailing I talked about earlier. Looks pretty good. Got the rear landing gear, which do roll quite well. And the uh, stand hole and the rear gear hold doors. Now, there is also no Gemini Jets logo on the underside of the aircraft, which is quite rare since they brand all of their models. And I think this is also because of that copyright issue and it never fully got finished. So the Gemini logo is not on the bottom of the plane. So that's another interesting thing about the model. And then finally, moving back, we've got the APU access port there in the back. So that is the New York livery for uh, the Herat here 757s. Now I'll quickly review the California livery. Everything is pretty much the same as the New York uh, mold besides the livery itself. So if we take a look uh, again, going through our usual review style, uh, we start off in the nose, uh, nose cone and windshield wipers and the uh, windshield. You'll notice they uh, printed some sunglasses onto the livery, which I think is quite funny. Uh, I really like that just sort of little detail there on the uh, model and in real life. I think it's pretty cool. Um, one thing I forgot to cover in the uh, New York livery is the Star Alliance logo is still there on the door. It's kind of hard to see on the New York one, but it is here, uh, which is quite visible on the California livery. Moving back, L1 boarding door and the nose gear. And then we've got the United logo in a bit of a more, bit of a more standard blue, I would say to their new livery. Uh, just below the, the text, we have what um, appears to look like the ocean, which I think is really cool. It's got a nice uh, sort of texture sort of uh, thing going on down there. Anyways, moving on, we have the L2 door uh, where the T and the E are. We have the uh, another antenna, got the engines, uh, winglet and port navigation light. Moving back over the wing box and the wing, we've got some palm trees here, and this is in the new United Color palette. Uh, they've been integrating the, obviously both these blues, but uh, the green, um, I'm not sure what the green is for, I've never seen it on board a United plane. But the uh, sort of maroon color, they're integrating into their United Premium Plus seats on their long haul aircraft. Uh, so that's kind of cool that they've included that color palette in this model, as well as the New York one, which was uh, featured in the barn in some of the buildings. Anyways, uh, moving on, we've got uh, the emergency exit doors over the wings. Kind of hard to see amongst the palm trees, but they are there. Then we have the pathway markings too. Uh, we have the Golden Gate Bridge uh, located there, as well as what I think it's the San Francisco skyline there, sort of popping out of the gray. I don't know for sure, but that would be my guess. And yes, yeah, so that's the Golden Gate Bridge. Again, we have the Wi-Fi dish and the registration, which is November uh, 14106, and then the American flag. And finally, the uh, rear emergency exit door. Taking a look at the back of the aircraft now, uh, We've got this blue sort of area back by the APU. And then the tail and the horizontal stabilizers. Here's a look at this aircraft from the back. Um, same mold, like I said before, nothing too different besides the livery. Uh, on this side, again, we just have the addition of the cargo doors, which is, there's one there just below the Golden Gate Bridge. And then there's also one right there below the T and the E. 
and we have the starboard navigation light there on the end of the wing. So uh, taking a look at the front of the aircraft again, uh, you can see the sunglasses a bit better, which I think uh, look kind of cool on the plane uh, if you look at it from the front. Moving back now, you can see we've got the engines. A uh, little bit of a uh, issue with the mold there, but in that's no big deal. Uh, these are the same engines as the New York livery. But yeah, so that is the uh, front of the aircraft. Now we'll take a look at the bottom. So, um, again, we've got the 757-200 text up in the front. We've got the nose gear and the nose gear hold doors. You can see that ocean um, again on the side, which looks quite nice. Moving back, we've got the engine, same detailing as New York. Uh, the rear landing gear, which also spin the stand hole and the gear hold doors again, like the New York livery, no uh, Gemini logo on the underside of the aircraft. And then finally, moving to the back, we have the APU access port, and you can see that blue patch on the underside. So that was it for uh, the video for today. This is quite possibly my most special video that I've ever done. And I think unless another one of these things happens again, it will stay that way. Like I said in the beginning, definitely get one of these if you find it somewhere because they are extremely rare. And all in all, uh, I'm a fan of this uh, Gemini 757 mold. This is their, I think it's their 2018 mold and it looks pretty nice. Uh, no problem with the models. They all came assembled and are in great condition. So uh, with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, this is definitely on the longer side of my review videos, but uh, I wanted to cover as much as I could with these two models. So um, that'll be it for today, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.